Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everybody. This is Chris, and I'd like to welcome you to a conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Um, and uh, as in our other uh, other episodes, uh, the first thing I would like to do is welcome my co-host, Amelia Sara. Hello, Amelia. Hello, Chris, and hello, listeners. Have you, you haven't drowned in the uh, flooding that Ireland is uh, experiencing, no? No, I have not. But we have had an awful lot of water on the coast and a lot of flooding, indeed, yes. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. I, and, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know if you will recall, but I did predict in February that the drought in California would be eased. And we are looking at four days of rain coming at us, and we've already had uh, another four days just in the month of February. We had hardly any in January at all. So I just want the listeners to know that the Kundalini can work on the weather without a problem. And I was fairly confident about that, if you remember. Mm-hmm. Do you That's remember? That's good news. That's good to hear. That is good to hear. <laughs> I do, of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, like- it's been amazing here. Um, if we could transport some of the water we receive here over to you, it would be wonderful indeed. Our beach has been completely transformed with a very high tide and Atlantic storms, and it's it's there's been amazing transformations here, cousin. Well, I, I think it's all good, yeah. and, and yeah, every every time you have a strong every- storm, you're going to have a beach erosion, and that will that will change things. Oh, I see. I'm hearing myself what? coming through. Uh, Centaur, can you go uh, blue? I can. Okay. Everybody, I would like to thank you for joining us with this conversation uh, about your Kundalini. I would like to uh, welcome everybody who is in the chat room. Hello, everyone there. I can't see the chat room because I'm on this iPad, but I, I'm even if there's just one of you there, hello, 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 and welcome. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone who's listening in the future, in the archives, and I, I encourage even those who are in the chat room right now to, to listen to it again. These, these interviews, these, these conversations with my Kundalini, basically, is what it is. These conversations with the Kundalini contain a lot of information that is not always, uh, available to a person the first time through by available i mean you may be focusing on some other aspect there it's a multi-aspected communication resource about your kundalini for you and so it would benefit you to listen to these uh, broadcasts over and over and over and uh i would like to say thank you to amelia centara and John O'Connor and the, the O'Connor family for sponsoring this program. Uh, the only reason we're here doing this is because of them and their generosity. So thank you, uh, Amelia, John, and family. I'd also like to thank Eileen Laurel for the many works that she does with the Kundalini there in, in South Florida, or I should say in uh, mid-Florida. So thank you, Eileen. I would like to thank Glenn Ola for his design uh, of the Kundalini Awakening Systems number one dot com website and maintenance of that. Uh, for any other information that you may be interested in, in pursuing with regards to the Kundalini that comes through Chrism, uh, please uh, uh, I invite you to watch the videos on the YouTube network and the, uh, the name there is Chrism.Kundalini. So you can go there. We have groups on the Yahoo. We have communities groups on Yahoo. Kundalini Awakening Systems One at Yahoo Groups, and we also have them on Facebook. Uh, Kundalini Awakening exclamation point on Facebook groups, and also uh, uh, Kundalini Healing on Facebook groups. We also have on Google Plus. We have a Kundalini Awakening Systems One community there. So for those of you that enjoy Google+, Plus, you can feel free to join that group and join in the conversation there. Uh, I would like to begin today's conversation with regards to those students uh, 
of mine that are that are listening to these broadcasts, uh, I want you to understand the level of kundalini that is coming through the voice. Listen to the voice. Feel the voice. If you've got those earbuds or earphones, really listen to the voice. Even even if you, you don't listen to the words that are being said or you're not focusing on that, listen to the voice. Let the kundalini in the voice enhance and assist your own kundalini awakening process, which is what many of you have discussed with me in person or on Skype. So for those students who are following Krishna Kundalini, really dial in to the voice as you listen to these broadcasts. Uh, and, it, and even if you're not a student, the kundalini in the voice will reach into you through your auditory nerve channels into the spine and begin to subtly in infuse itself into your spinal cord. Now, with the understanding that if you're not ready to have this, then it's not ready to have you either. Okay? So know this and understand this. But if you start getting some kundalini symptoms because you're listening to this broadcast, you are ready to have this. Know this and understand this. Uh, I'm going to bring Amelia uh, Santara back on. Hello, Amelia. Hello, Kristen. Do you have uh, anyone on the in the chat room there? Yes, we have a few people here. We have a couple of guests with numbers after them. We have Julie. Julie has just logged in. Hello, and we Julie. We have Suka, and Suka is here again this week and has logged in as well. So we have five at the moment, but typically more people will join us in the next five or ten minutes. Who who is that last one? Sukha. Sukha. S U K H A. Sukha. Yes, yes. Well, hello, Sukha. Nice to see. Nice, nice for you to join us. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and begin this conversation. Thank you, Amelia. I'm going to go ahead and begin this conversation now. Uh, with this conversation, we'll be talking about attachment, attachment as it pertains to the ego. And, and I think I've covered some of this in other broadcasts, but I'm being compelled to repeat some of that information for people because it's it's not a one one shot and you're and you're all you know taken care of. There, for some of these things, uh, because we're so tied into our ego, we need to be reminded. Our ego actually needs to be reminded about the behavioral modifications we are we are initiating in order to receive more kundalini. Kundalini will not come or feed the ego. The ego does that all by itself. And the ego may look at the idea of kundalini and go, oh my gosh, look at all those superpowers I can have. And oh my gosh, look at all the people I could influence and and uh you know do this or this or that with them and but the kundalini will not support that the kundalini this frequency of kundalini which is a higher higher frequency than than you're going to get say through martial arts or through uh uh some of the religious protocols and things of that nature this is a a level of kundalini that is forming an ascension platform for people you have reached this information uh, not accidentally. Okay, this is coming to you because you are ready to have it. Um, with this level of, of Kundalini activation, uh, most of it, is, of the beneficial quality of it, will be about behavioral modification towards uh, selfless service for other people, helping your your fellow woman and your fellow man come into a greater level of divine infusion themselves just by virtue of being in your kundalini radiance and so that radiance needs to be how's the word the, the radiance needs to be understood as a vector of communication a multi multi vector communication uh, from the kundalini within you to those who walk into that radiance. So you need to be able to control your thoughts. 
which brings us back to our behavioral modification in order to enhance the kundalini coming through. Oh, I hope I didn't, didn't do something bad here. There we are. Okay. So the behavioral modification, if we look at the safeties, we're looking at forgiveness. We're looking at tolerance. We're looking at love. Uh, we're looking at compassion. We're looking at uh, extreme levels of honesty and truth. We're looking at levels of service, selfless service for other people. I don't care if it's just opening a door for a person, helping a person cross the street, uh, letting a person cut in front of you on the on the on the on the highways. Uh, being a grace upon this world really is what it comes down to. And I want to encourage you to adopt those behavioral modifications that I just mentioned uh, into your Kundalini Awakening process. And the deal is, is you have to do this in the general public areas that you are, at the gas station, uh, on the highways, in the school, in the stores, in the restaurant, at work, at home. Uh, this is not something that you can just do for two hours and then, and then you can wait you know, for the next day. This is something that I want to encourage you to do as much as you possibly can all the time, especially the forgiveness, especially the tolerance. And so let's talk about attachment in this context. I want you to attach to your behavioral modifications. And I know, I know, all the, you know, a lot of the current teachings of Kundalini say, oh my gosh, you don't want to attach to anything, it's just going to ground you. Well, that's not necessarily true. If you attach to love, for instance, give the gift of love from you to, to other people, uh, the gift of love from you to the environment, the gift of love to you, from you to the to, uh, to, to even, you know, the fellow mortals, the animals on this world. That is a very, very positive attachment. And I, at this stage, I will suggest that people begin to attach to the gift of love from themselves to other people, to the environment, to the world, to your kundalini, okay? These are positive attachments. Uh, attached to the to the uh, practice of the safeties. And if you go to Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com and you look at the left hand menu, you'll see the safeties and click on the safeties. And I w- want to give you permission right now to copy those safeties and to live your life now by those safety protocols. Kundalini is a lifetime experience. It doesn't end. It is not a a one-time summertime experience. Oh yeah, I did summer. I did Kundalini last summer, and it was really go- cool and and fun and all that. It's not that way at all. And I know that there are people on the web, on the internet, who will proclaim that Kundalini is a one-off experience, and that you can do it, you know, in a month, and you'll be just fine. And this is absolutely not true. Not true at all. Okay. Uh, so I, I, you know, I'm going to encourage you to understand, to attach to that idea, to to attach to that truth that your kundalini will, of all the things that you get to take with you after you die, memories, emotions, and kundalini come with you after death. So I want you to understand understand that as well. I am living proof that the kundalini will come to a person uh, in the next life, uh, and that child will have a very, very interesting go of it. I can, I can attest to that. So I want you to, uh, to, to attach to these truths and to these understandings. Give yourself into the kundalini. Attach to your kundalini. Now, with kundalini, you don't really have much of a choice. Once it's up, it's up. And... and uh, what I'm suggesting is that you choose to attach to the validity and the, the validation of your kundalini in you being a sentient, conscious, divine force of its own waiting inside of you until your 
evolutionary program is mature enough to have the kundalini and anybody because i'm not very well known you know kristen kundalini nobody knows who that guy is because of that if you find yourself listening to this really it, it is not an accident it is not an accident you may be ready to have this kundalini within yourself um so look at that I want, you, I want to encourage you to communicate verbally with your kundalini out loud. Yes, I know. I know. You, you may feel like an idiot at first, talking to, oh, hi, my kundalini. This is Chris. I was just saying hello, you know, because I haven't said hello to you ever before. You know, I'm pretending. Uh, so, so have that conversation with your kundalini. Seriously, do it in the shower. Do it in the car. Do it where nobody can see you or hear you, but do it. Develop that relationship. Develop an attachment for that relationship. And now let me tell you what's going to happen to these attachments. As these attachments become uh, firm within your being, as they become an, a, a, uh, a solid expression uh in your, in your being and, and through your physicality, uh, the attachment or the need to have that attachment will fall away because you and the kundalini will merge to the degree that those qualities that I mentioned, the honesty, the compassion, the forgiveness, the love, tolerance, these things will become part of who you are. And as I've said before, the worst thing that can happen to you is that you become a better person. A nicer person, a more loving person, a person that people want to be around, a person that, that people want to hear and to see and, and to touch and to relate with. And not just the people, but the animals, the insects, the plants, they will all enjoy your presence because of the attachments to behavioral modification for Kundalini that you have been doing. Now, I would like to give the guest call in number is 347 934 347 Our lovely sister Amelia is, is looking at the chat room, and if you have any question there in the chat room, please feel free to ask it. She will, she will uh, bring that uh, online to us here. Also sitting with me here at the ashram is is uh, our Rosemary Goliath, and uh, you know she's she's also been going through this tremendous change, and yet she is getting phenomena to support uh, the practice that she is doing. And, and and don't get me wrong, it's not her head is not being blown off. Her, you know, she she's not uh, flying around the ashram here. But she is getting kundalini-based, temperature-based phenomena. And this is important to know. The kundalini will give you a little touch of that. Now, I don't want you to attach to phenomena. Don't attach to the phenomena. But read the phenomena as if you would read a book or you're reading a, a manuscript or you're reading an instruction manual about you having kundalini and recognize the gift of the phenomena that's coming to you and then through that recognition and through your enhanced communication with your kundalini, allow that to just be and continue on normally as you normally would with your life. Now, if the phenomena is, is quite large, say like you know really heavy kriyas or things of that nature, uh, then you and I may want to have a conversation on Skype and and uh, just so everyone knows, my Skype ID is chrism.kundalini, all lowercase. And uh, if you want to con become a contact with me on Skype, uh, send me an email at kf, as in Frank, I-R, I have to remember that, K-F-I-R-E, F, as in Frank, O-R, a as an apple, L L at yahoo.com. So that's K fire for all at yahoo.com. And, and uh, drop me a line and let me know that you want to be uh, a contact uh, and uh, 
and then we can go ahead and see see how things are going with you. Uh, so feel free to do that, but really, really, really begin to modify the way you live your life towards the the security of the kundalini within you, towards the expression of the kundalini within outwards to this world, to these people, to this environment. As above, so below. As within, so without. As your process matures, these attachments, these conscious attachments will fall away because they will have been turned into uh, defined behaviors. So in a way, you, you're redefining who you are and how you are for the benefit of the kundalini to come into you. Now, I know that some of you, some, 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 uh, some of you folks who may be new to the information from Kristen Kundalini, uh, you know, a lot of people don't, don't have uh, levels of security within their kundalini. They're afraid of it. They've gone onto the internet and they've Googled Kundalini and Kundalini syndrome has come up and they, oh my God, they look at the Kundalini syndrome and they go, oh my God, I don't want that. You know, they run as fast as, uh, as they can away from that and I encourage them to run. But for those of you who kind of look at that and go, oh, okay, um, how do we do, how do we avoid that? <laughs> well, this is how you avoid that. By practicing the safeties, by engaging in a positive, grace-based uh, behavioral modification system, you will not have Kundalini syndrome. If you engage in a community that is also doing the same thing, such as the Kundalini Awakening Systems, uh, multiple communities, uh, you will not uh, be as likely to have Kundalini syndrome. Simply because people are practicing these qualities. What causes Kundalini uh, syndrome is allowing fear uh, to come in to your Kundalini awakening equation, and and you know the fear begins to uh, adhere itself to the ego, and the ego adheres itself to the fear, and and from there you have this this uh, cycle of of uh, debilitation and pain and and hurt that is you know, waiting to happen for you. And I, you don't need to go there. You don't need to be afraid of it either. If you practice these positive-based uh, protocols that the safeties are, the forgiveness, the compassion, the tolerance, the patience, the honesty, the truth, the sincerity, all of these things, the charity, uh, you will not have Kundalini syndrome. And you don't hear me speaking you know, in such absolutist terms very often. But I am right now about that. Now, uh, uh, let's see. Amelia, please feel free to come on and let me know if there are any uh, chat room questions. Those of you in the chat room, if you do have a question, uh, I would like you to feel free to ask it. Write it out there uh, on the chat room, and Amelia will read it, and she'll relay it to me and... and uh, uh, the, the kundalini in me will do, will, will give the answer to you as pertains to your question and situation. For those of you that would like to call in, the number is 347 934 0026. Um, uh, so moving on from attachments, uh, remember I said these are positive based behavioral modification attachments. Glue them to your behaviors. Make them real. Self-correct over and over and over and over and over and over until your ego and your consciousness gets it right. Be that forgiving person. Forgive others, but also remember to forgive yourself. Be gr have gratitude to the kundalini. Have gratitude to others, but also have gratitude to the kundalini in you. The kundalini in you is the driving force behind your intuition, behind your dream life. It's working hard to bring your conscious level to the point where you can have the kundalini in a constructive, safe, and positive environment. 
practice these these protocols. Let yourself attach to these protocols and don't worry. When you no longer need to have any attachments, they will go. They will go. But right now you're living in a world of ego. In the United States, the United States is basically, it should be called the United States of Ego. This is the country where we're living right now. It's the United States of Ego, the UA, the UAOE. <laughs> okay, so understand that. And it's also the world, this, you know, this world really is a place of the ego, by the ego, for the ego, and yet also for the refinement of the ego as we move closer and closer and closer to the divine embodiment, which is what the Kundalini is all about, the divine embodiment, becoming that, what did uh, that one guy, he, he coined a term, uh, homo luminosus. I think he called it, like like you have, uh, uh, um, <laughs> one, one of these words is failing me right now, um, uh, Anyway, this, is, this would be a, a human being of light. And the light doesn't come from outside yourself, except in some of the final stages. It starts from within you. It starts inside you. Don't reach outside for the light. Reach inside for the light. The seat of the soul is your tailbone. So if you're sitting down right now, you're sitting on the seat of your soul, which is only appropriate. But the seat of the soul is in the tailbone. It is that divinity, that, that dormant divinity that is waiting to be awakened. And by these behavioral modifications, you will be able to awaken that force within you. Uh, uh, your ego may right now may be going, wow, I can, I can awaken this kundalini. Kundalini, hell, it sounds like another noodle. I can do this. I don't need that Chrisom guy. You know, and, and hey, that's fine. That's fine. If you don't need that Chrisom guy, well, that Chrisom guy, uh, you know, you don't need to listen to him. But I will encourage you, those of you that may not have such a strong ego, uh, to listen to me. And if you want to learn, you listen to these broadcasts. These broadcasts aren't costing you anything. So if you're one of those people that say, Oh, well, if he's just giving that information away and, and it's free, well, then it's probably not worth very much because it's free. Well, I want you to feel free to donate to Kundalini Awakening System. Pay as much as you want or as little as you want. But do that. If this is what helps you own this information, then give a donation to uh, kundalini Dash. Uh, what is it? <laughs> Help me out here, Amelia. You're the one that announces this all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it is Ascension Dash Kundalini Dot Blogspot Dot Com. But actually, if you just put in Ascension Kundalini into the Google, it will come up for you. Ascension Kundalini, there's the two words to remember. Google it and you'll get the, uh, the website address. And on the top right-hand side is the donate button. That's funny that you couldn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> you can see, uh, you can see how, how I, I am so tied into the greed-based monetary system here, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, well, thank you. I'm really, you. I'm really enjoying this, though, The um, you talking about the safeties because um, they have made such a difference in my life, Chris. And, you know, I know that positive-based modification is also the same for Kundalini. But what I learned over time is that um, they are really for the refinement of the ego. You know, I didn't know that when I started doing them. <laughs> I no, didn't. I mean, I was just doing the forgiveness, we'll say, because I knew I needed to forgive. So I was doing the forgiveness over and over and over. But I, I learned as time passed that um, refining the ego, that's, that's the journey. That's, that's you know, so important. 
That is the journey. Anyway. You're absolutely correct. I mean, it really yeah. is. Um, when a person comes out here to the to the ashram, like Rosemary has done, poor poor thing, uh, a person will get a lot of opportunities for forgiveness because the kundalini in me will initiate circumstances where forgiveness will be a choice. It will be something that that you'll be able to choose to do or not to do, and then based upon your choice, uh, your teaching will, will expose itself to you. Um, so, But getting back to this, if, if, if you're one of the people that needs to pay a lot of money to have this information, then feel free to pay the money to the ascension-kundalini at blogspot.blogspot. Uh, like she said, just Google Kundalini, <laughs> Ascension Dash Kundalini in Google. It'll take you right there. <laughs> there. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, pay for it then. Pay for it. I mean, we'll use it to to further these broadcasts or to, to put on a seminar or to to even pay the Internet bill here. We'll use it in a po- very positive, constructive way. Uh, so feel free to do that, and feel free not to do that. It's up to you. Whatever you do, do your best to begin to initiate these behavioral modifications on yourself. Keep that tongue up behind your upper front teeth as much of the day and night as you can. Granted, you're going to be kissing and chewing and coughing and sneezing and talking and laughing or crying, but when you're not doing those things, Put it up, and you'll also find that it goes up there naturally. It's not something that that you have to train yourself to do with the eyes. The eyes up position is something more of a training. Uh, uh, You'll have to train your eyes to look up uh, as you're doing your meditation, things of that nature. You'll also notice that your thumb tip and your forefinger tip will want to join together. It's almost like magnets have been inserted into the fingertip and the thumb tip and those magnets are positive and negative and they attract each other and zip your hands are right together your thumb tip and forefinger tip are right together and then just go ahead and spread the other three out do this as much as you can um i've done this uh, uh i i have done this even when i'm uh uh, you know, working at a job, you know, whenever I can put my fingers in that position, then I do it. If I'm driving and I can put my fingers in that position and still hold the steering wheel tightly, I do it. Okay? If I can walk barefoot on bare soil, I do it. If I can jump into 30-degree water with, with an ex nun, I do it. Hi, Rosemary's sitting right next to me right here. She's just kind of laughing at that. (laughs) That's what we did when we went to Shasta, as you know. Anyway, so really, really, really begin to change how you are. You are no longer the person you once were before you heard the word Kundalini. You are that new person. You are that nascent saint in the development stages. Okay, so I'm... Oh God, here's a weird segue to this. This is the next, uh, the next topic that Kundalini wants to come to you with. And Wow, this is real surprising because I've never talked about this so much before. Uh, okay. Uh, everything communicates. Inanimate objects communicate and animate objects communicate. All life communicates. The air communicates. The rocks communicate. Your (laughs) plastic will communicate because it's oil-based. Glass will communicate because it's silicon-based. Everything has a level of communication with you. What you are in reality is is a moving form of of energy it's kind of like let's just say you're like a a walking tornado of energy 
Okay, a tornado that isn't ripping up the earth or anything, ex- except maybe if you if you do that. The Kundalini is basically saying everything partakes of your radiance, not just people. All creation partakes of divine radiance. And all creation includes things that you wouldn't consider alive, like a doorknob. You wouldn't consider a doorknob to be alive, but yet it is. It's a mineral kingdom if it is a metal doorknob. Uh, it, would, it would fall under the... Uh, the uh, if if you're a new person, uh, King Kubera would be the controller of of the the metals and things of that or Vulcan if you if you follow some of the other belief systems. So really, really begin to understand the level of communication that is happening to you. Different frequencies of energy offer different levels of density. Different levels of density will determine whether or not you can pass through it or not. Because if you're at a higher level of, of, uh, of uh, density, uh, when you come in contact with a lower level of density, you won't be able to pass through it. That's why it can be so difficult to have a top-down uh, kundalini awakening from, from to density, which is you know, a little more difficult. So understand that, know this, and realize that every step that you take, every breath that you take, every swallow of saliva that you take, everything that you do is a level of communication with the environment around you and within you. And the Kundalini controls all of this. The Kundalini is the divine consciousness that we call God or Goddess. Kundalini is God. It is divinity. It is within you. And you need to understand that. You need to understand that. You don't need to to put a cross on your wall. You are a cross. Stand with your legs together and your arms outstretched and you are that cross. You are a walking, talking crucifixion. If you come at it from a Christian angle, you bear that cross right now. And all the problems and all the issues that come with that cross Those are your challenges to overcome, and you will overcome them eventually. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but maybe next week. (laughs) Unless you live in Ireland and, you know, you're getting washed out into the the Irish Ocean there, which, by the way, has no sharks because all the sharks have eaten each other. Maybe they partook of too much of the, the, the food that they served there in those pubs. No offense. No, no offense to the pub owners there in Ireland. Um, you are the cross. You are the crucifixion. You understand this? When you put your legs together and spread your arms out wide, you are the crucifixion. You are that cross. And right where those two things intersect is what? It's your heart. And what is the heart the center of? It is the love and the communication of love. At the top of that cross, at the top of the heart, is the fifth chakra, which is your throat, which has to do a lot with communication. Spoken words, kissing, breathing, ears, nose, and throat. And then right below that, that, that center of the cross is the third chakra. It has to do with you, the power of you, the confidence and validation that you give yourself so that you can love others and they can love you because you have that love for yourself. You have that kundalini. And it's not a self-aggrandizing love. It's not all about... 
uh, being prideful and boastful. Says, yes, I've got Kundalini awakening. I'm a very powerful man now. No, it's not about that. It's about the... In order to have high-quality love for others, you need to also have a high-quality love for yourself, a respect for yourself, discipline of respect and love for who you are, not at the expense of others. You don't need, you know, we can love ourselves without, you know, uh, you know, hurting another person or, or you know, expending another person's uh, happiness, you know, for our own love. You don't have to do that at all. You just know that you are a child of God. You are a child of the divine, and the divine is seeking you to awaken in. Love yourself for that and that alone. Love yourself because you've worked hard to come to an area where Kundalini can, can blossom within you. The fruit is ripening, and you are the fruit. Everything is communicating to you. The grass that you walk on is communicating to you. There are life forms inside the atmosphere and the air that science has not yet been able to identify. And so, therefore, they don't exist for science because they can't identify it. <clears throat> but they're there. The entire communities of life forms in the atmosphere and interconnecting with, with the, uh, the more dense levels of the physical expression. Life is all around you. You're breathing it. Prana has consciousness. And for those of you, one of these days I'll do a program. If, if I get a level of interest that people want to hear about uh, prana feeding or breatharian techniques within a kundalini context, I'll be more than happy to do a program just based on that. Uh, but prana is also alive. This cosmic radiation that the scientists call it, uh, that is also conscious. You are breathing stars with every breath that you take. Your kundalini knows this because your kundalini created the stars created the cosmic radiation, created this world among many, many, many other worlds for the, for the balancing of karma and the expression of kundalini through the balancing of that karma. So kundalini wants to move right into the karmic issues right now. Let's talk about karma. Karma is, you know, in a, in a, in a short sentence, uh, as you do, so shall you receive. Or as you give, so shall you receive. Uh, and that goes whether if you give goodness, then you'll receive goodness. If you, if you give uh, uh, hurt, then you'll receive hurt. Okay? And these things are, if you have any kind of an account uh, in the divine, uh, uh, <laughs> it's a bank of karma. We'll just call it the, the, the BOK. Okay? The bank of karma uh, and we all have an account at the Bank of Karma. And our good, our good deeds are in the account, and our, our also some of our not-so-good deeds are in the account, and the accountant is keeping track of that. Okay, you are the accountant, by the way. Your kundalini, actually, is the accountant. And, and the accountant's looking and said, okay, Chris, I'm, oh, God, what a challenging. Okay, we'll have to do some, some heavy work on that Chris character. And then, and then that Christian character, you know, will get the Kundalini and then he'll get all of that karma that he has to pay. All of those debts that must be balanced. Well, the same thing goes for you. Although, I would, I would suggest that all of you are far better than that Christian per person when it comes to the, uh, the, the beneficial uh, <laughs> wealth that you have in positive karma. Um, you will still have some karma to balance and the kundalini will bring that up sometimes hot and heavy sometimes gentle to the point where you won't even know so know this understand this let this sink in you will have karma so so if you know when you have this karma and you have the kundalini come up you can expect the kundalini to bring up uh, karma for you 
And it's not doing this because it's mad at you or it's angry at you or it's just like, well, let's have some bad things happen to Chrism today. No, no, it's there because you need to get it balanced. You need to do some forgiveness work. You need to do some positive outreach work. Or you, or you need to do something that is a little more difficult, such as uh, help, help train a child. And sometimes when you're training a child, you have to have tough love, right? Just like when the Kundalini is training you and gives you uh, a painful Kriya that you have to go through and, and it won't let you get out of it. Well, that's, that's Kundalini tough love. That's the Kundalini tough love. Or you lose your job or your, your relationship falls apart right in the middle of your kundalini awakening, well, that also has to do with karma and karmic balancing. And that also has to do with attachment as well. Uh, you know, if you're attached to negativity, well, you know, that will, only have, that will only last a certain amount of time before you'll be forced into positivity. Kundalini, because it is, as the Sanskriti people would say, it is the Maha force, M-A-H-A, force, which means the most powerful force. Because it is that, it will allow you to make mistakes for only so long before it interjects and begins corrective measures. And those corrective measures may come out during your initial uh, pre-Kundalini spinal sweep awakening uh, uh, activities. So as you're practicing, shall we say, uh, as you're practicing your Kundalini yoga or your yoga or whatever, whatever Tai Chi, uh, five Tibetans, as you're practicing these, these exercises, karma may get stirred up within you. And the, and the first one that's going to come up are the ones that need to come up the most. These are the immediate needs. Let them come up, realize, and and have a certain level of, of understanding that karma is going to come up with the kundalini. You don't know how much, and you don't know of what kind. And so you just need to trust the kundalini in you. Remember, have that conversation. For many of you, the kundalini will respond. It may not respond in words, but it may respond in a thought, or an intuition, or a vision, or even a tactile temperature somewhere on the body that would signify a yes or a no or a hi or hello or you know a, a form of communication that is just between you and the kundalini karma is going to happen for every single one of you coming into the kundalini certainly has happened to me karma is going to happen for rosemary sitting next to me right here it's already happening to her I'll let her speak to that a little bit. How have you felt, uh, uh, Rosemary? How have you felt since you've been here at the at the ashram that that your karma has been uh, uh, expressing itself to you by virtue of the teachings you've received and the shall we say the uh, the communication from the Kundalini that has come to you. There have been a number of things that have happened during the night of my sleeping, just some, an image in a dream or, um, uh, I don't, uh, high temperature in my body once in a while. And I would think mostly it's in just inward confusion and hurt by my own past, my continuing thoughts and impressions and ideas and expectations, all of those inner things that I don't look at ordinarily, but when I feel those, and I've written about those you know, sometimes, a couple times on the, the, um, the awakening system on the, the Facebook group, that it's confronted with those over and over Oh, sorry, Rosemary, your voice is gone. You're muffled and very far away. Something has happened with the mic. Um, okay, thank you. Can you hear me, uh, Amelia? 
Hello. Yes, Kristen. Yes, you're coming in. You're coming in clearly. Yes. Okay. Uh, where did you last hear Rosemary before her voice faded out? What was she saying? I, I miss. Oh, Kristen, I'm sorry. Don't ask. I don't know. Okay. Well, basically, what she's saying is that the Kundalini is coming to her in ways that allow her to distinguish. Uh, the information uh, as being from the Kundalini instead of being, say, from me or, or, or from her own ego. Uh, she's had uh, visuals. She's had uh, temperature changes. She's had behavioral modifications occur to her from the Kundalini, but also from me as well. Okay. So, so you will have this occur for you. This is not something that is only happening to some of the kundalini people uh this will happen to virtually all of the kundalini people kundalini will communicate with you once again it may not be in words it may be in images it may be in a dream message it may be in uh, as i said a a physical location of a temperature or a or a, a little tingling in in uh you know say a fingertip or a toe tip or something of that nature uh, pay attention to your body. Pay attention to your feelings because the Kundalini will also communicate with you through your feelings. Uh, are you hearing me okay here now? I just want to make sure that uh, that this is happening. Amelia, can you come on and let me know? Yes, Kristen, I can hear you clearly. Ah, thank you, thank you. Okay. So initiate those understandings within yourself. Allow yourself to feel and communicate with the Kundalini. Now, look, at first, your feeling of the Kundalini is a gift. And you don't always get to start out with that gift. Matter of fact, that's a gift that comes a little bit later. You need to begin to create an environment where the gift of the Kundalini can grow. And you do that by practicing the safeties. These safety protocols work. They are a standalone kundalini awakening technique if you do them every day and i have some people doing them twice a day you're going to get it you're going to get it you don't need me to shakti pot you well some of you might but you practice those safeties and you begin your kundalini awakening journey practicing those safeties includes Balancing your karma. Balancing your karma. Now, you can do good things that begin to balance your karma, and I suggest that you do. One of the good things is I would suggest that you go back to the Fukushima healing event that we had and, and begin your own Fukushima healing work based upon the HUNA, H-U-N-A, prayer technology that was discussed in that conversation. Do the HUNA prayer work for the Fukushima. Sorry, Chrism, you're gone again. Wow. Oh, you're back again. Okay, yeah, it says I, almost it's as if you dropped the mic, which you obviously haven't, but that's the, the effect of, of it. Oh, thank you. Well, no, 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 thank you, thank you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and repeat. Where did it cut off? Were you listening or were you sleeping? It, I, no, no. No, I was not saying it cut off. It's like I'm doing a hundred things here, actually. <laughs> it cut, no, you need to say what you were saying again about the Fukushima. You had said about the Huna prayer technology, and it went okay, after okay. that. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. Thank you so much. I don't know what's going on, but I'll just continue it again. Uh, you need to do the Fukushima prayer work technology that we discussed in the, the Fukushima healing event that we have in one of our conversations. Do it for 40 days. If you can do it for 60 days, do it for 60 days. It was on December 4th that we did this. So you go back to December 4th, and uh, thank you, Rosemary, for that. You go back to December 4th and listen to that conversation 
and practice that Fukushima. That is a positive karma-based activity. Going and visiting complete strangers in rest homes is another positive karmic activity. Stopping at an accident scene and helping people who are in, you know, very, very stressful conditions, that is a positive karmic activity. Helping a person cross the street. Uh, as I said before, you know, doing all these kind things for perfect strangers really is the way to go. And I say, I, 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 I elaborate by saying perfect strangers because it's easy to do nice things for your kid. It's easy to do nice things for those you're familiar with. It's harder to reach out into the population and do those same things for perfect strangers. Let that occur. And by doing that, you not only help your own karmic situation, but you help society as a whole. Kundalini wants you to help society as a whole. Because just as it is within, so is it without. Okay? As you experience this love within... Well, so can others experience the love that is in your radiance for themselves. You might just cause that person not to commit suicide that day. You must just cause that person not to, to be so upset or so angry or so erratic. Far your kindness reaches. It reaches very, very far. And it's cumulative. The niceness that occurs from you that affects that person standing in line at the grocery store with you will extend to their loved ones and then extend to other people through them and so on and so forth. Like a, like a flowering plant, it, it grows branches and, it, and those branch, branches go branches and those roots grow roots and those, you know, the leaves and the fruit, everything comes into place. Everything comes into place. So do these things. Practice these things. Allow yourself to have the benefit of this information that is giving you very clear, concise instructions on what you need to do to clear yourself of karma. Karma that would block the kundalini if you do not do it or if you don't. If you just decide, well, you know, I'm really happy being a mean person. You know, if you're one of those people that says, oh, well, I'm, I'm practicing shadow kundalini right now. And that gives me permission to be a mean little shit. Which is what some people actually do. You know, they say, well, I'm in my Cali mode. So that gives me a per permission to, to cut off people's heads and cast spells. No, it doesn't. But that's their ego talking. You know, remember, you come from density into refinement. You come from density into refinement. You don't go back into density because you think that that uh, that you're being given permission to address your dark or shadow side uh, from the Kundalini. No, uh -uh. it doesn't work that way. All you're doing is really is just creating more karma. That creates more blockage. That can create more pain for you to go through. Just like the plant that is a seedling that is, being, that is germinating in the darkness of the soil, well, it reaches upward towards the light. So do the human plants reach upward towards the light. How many plants do you see as they, as they come up from the soil, bend it back down and try to get back in the soil. How many plants do you see do that? Not too many. And neither does the human plant do that. Unless it's burying its head in the sand in order to avoid the responsibility of refining towards the goodness of love, light, and unity of this universe, this multiverse, this God-verse. And you are the gods and goddesses in this God-verse, this goddess-verse. 
Okay. Amelia, could you come back on? Oh, dear. I'm back on. <laughs> <laughs> Do what? Is the Don't ask working? me an awkward question. <laughs> <laughs> no, the microphone is working fine, Chris. It, I lost you again for about two seconds, but you came back, so I didn't interrupt you. Uh, that's I don't so know weird. That, that's I'm, yeah. I'm barely holding this thing. I, I mean, I've got my fingertips on the corners here, but I did drop. I dropped the iPad in Yosemite. Maybe that has something uh-huh. to do with it. Yeah, yeah. I, I cracked that. I cracked the the face of it. Great. Anyway, so so if, if if that is happening and it's my fault, then then ladies and gentlemen, I apologize profusely. Okay. Okay. Well, now, well, it's, it's fine again. Okay. Very good. Is are there any questions from the from the uh, chat group? No, there are no questions. Julie uh, put forward the suggestion, you know, um, of services of haircuts, shaves, and hugs for the homeless as being oh. a way. Very yeah. nice, very nice, very nice. And Rosemary, as she makes sleeping bags for the homeless as well. I mean, we all can help each other within our means. If you're an extremely wealthy person, well then, you know, buy a hundred sleeping bags for the homeless or buy them food or, you know, do these things. My father, before he passed, he was buying homeless families turkeys and, and food for them. I mean, he was spending thousands of dollars doing this. And he wasn't really, you know, he wasn't standing around taking credit for it either. And I don't recommend that anybody do that. Selfless service without feeling the need to be rewarded with with congratulations or just just know that you've done good and accept it and walk away from it and continue with your day. Kind of like what you do, Amelia, when you give your your kundalini infused therapeutic touch. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, indeed. Hmm. I would like you to speak a little bit on that right now, if you would, just to let people know what it is and what you're doing since I brought it up. Please do that. Okay. Well, Kundalini infused therapeutic touch is, is a little bit, I suppose, to describe what happens. And. Um, Prism, can I just ask you a question? I can hear myself three times as I'm speaking. Can you hear an echo? Well, let me let me try putting myself on hold here. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll continue. Um, oh, actually, that's a little bit better. Okay. Well, what what I do is Kundalini infused therapeutic touch is when I put my hands on a person for healing. It is infused with the kundalini. The kundalini comes through my touch and through my hands to the person. It is the kundalini radiance. It is a gift of grace that comes to the person. It is not something that I do. It is not something that my ego does. It is me being there for sure and the kundalini within me going to the person. And so for me... um, the good thing that I do is that I put myself into a situation and a scenario that allows um, the kundalini to go to the person as the kundalini decides. Sometimes people will ask for very specific healing, um, you know, for a specific thing in their body, and that's okay. I, I am there, and, and I, I will ask for the kundalini to go as the kundalini decides. It's not something that I do. Um, I can feel the kundalini myself. I mean, there are different ways that this occurs. And just to tell you that I can feel the kundalini moving. I can feel the infused touch. And I feel it in different ways. Sometimes through my hands, I will feel heat and energy tingling. And not only that, it's as if my hands energetically at times will go into a body. Or sometimes it isn't even from my hands. It comes through my heart and it goes to the person in that way. So I never really know 
how that's going to occur. I, the Kundalini, what I have, I suppose myself and the Kundalini have this agreement now because the Kundalini directed me to do this and I put myself into the position of doing good for somebody and the Kundalini then decides how that's going to be given through me and also how the person on the receiving side is going to tactilely feel it. Some people will feel um, the infused touch in the area that is unwell or sore. Some people feel heat or tingling. Um, and again, it is not the same for everybody. So it very much depends. And, and another thing that, that is interesting as well, even though we call it Kundalini-infused therapeutic touch, it's not necessarily touch that has to be done, you know, skin to skin. It can be done long distance too. Yeah. So um, we say on the Yahoo healing group or on the Facebook healing group, um, Kundalini infused therapeutic touch is also given at a long distance and the effect is, is, is quite similar. So that's one of the, when Kristen said, you know, that is one of the good things that, that I am honoured and I mean really honoured to be able to do um, for people. But it is really just me being there. It is the Kundalini effect of it. Okay, Chris. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Amelia. Was that Very okay? Nice. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Thank you for that. And uh, uh, one thing I'd like to add to that is that there's a high level of devotion involved before you touch anybody. Before you touch anybody with uh, KITT, there's a high level of devotion that comes in. And this level of devotion ramps up the energy, really ramps it up. Am I right? Oh, yes, you are. I totally forgot that. It's amazing because I assume that because that's what I do. The devotion is essential. Um, and it makes a huge, huge difference. It makes a huge, huge difference, Chrism. Um, it's just such a beautiful thing to actually do as well for, for me, you know. <laughs> no, I hear you. I hear you. And, and yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it's definitely a gift that works both ways. When you do the KITT, uh, Kundalini Infused Therapeutic Touch, it's a gift that is received and a gift that is given at the same time. Because time. I am surrendering to the Kundalini, I am in devotion to the Kundalini, there at that particular moment, I am, you know, it is, um, it's abuse, abuse. I, can't, I actually need to stop now because I'm going to. No, I understand. Okay. I, I, going right into bliss, going into tears. You let it go, Amelia, let it come. <laughs> don't, don't uh, stop it. Now, I want you to know, all of you, and, and for those in the archives, I'm including you in, in the all of you as well, that we're having a seminar in New York. Uh, it'll be about 30 minutes north of New York City. This will be happening in, uh, in late March, March uh, 22nd and 23rd, I think. I don't have my calendar in front of me. Uh, can you go and grab one of those calendars from the kitchen? Thank you. Thank you, Rosemary. Um, we're having a, a Kundalini Awakening seminar uh, in uh, Upper... Uh, I, I'm going to call it Upper New York State because it's, well, at least it's above New York City anyway. And we're having it at a uh, at a very, very beautiful place. But, oh, let's see here. Yeah, that would be the 22nd and the 23rd. Don't fall, Rosemary. Falling is not allowed. She tripped. Uh, we're having it then. And then we're also, can I have that back, please? We're also having the Irish uh, seminar on the the 29th and the 30th of March. Okay. So, so I encourage any and all of you. Did I say that right? Was I was I wrong, Amelia? No, you're perfectly right. I'm okay again. <laughs> Oh, that's just so wonderful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bliss, bliss. You've got to have it. you got to have it. So I'm going to let you go it's ahead actually, and elaborate I, on those. 
Okay, well, the, the place um, in New York is Westchester County, I believe, and it's a beautiful setting on the Hudson River. And it's 35 miles north of New York City. I think um, it's about an hour by public service, by, by train, I think, with stops and all of that, less than an hour. Um, and it begins on the 23rd, the 22nd. It begins on the 22nd, which is a Saturday, at 11 a.m. And we are staying overnight in the venue. And your lunch is included and your dinner is included and your single occupancy room, the seminar itself, your breakfast the following day and your lunch the following day. At, um, so do get in contact with me and I'm actually going to give the price it's $222 which is exceptional value because we've kept it at that to make it as accessible as possible and to just cover what it is we need to cover in terms of expenses and to cover accommodation and, and all of that so please there are a few spaces left it's going to be a small seminar so get in contact with me if you have any interest it's a meal, oh, it's not, sorry, it's kundalini matters at gmail.com. And the same email address you can use if you have an interest in attending the Irish seminar. And really that's a European seminar rather than an Irish seminar. It's, it's been held in Ireland, but in actual fact, it's very accessible from Europe because you can fly into Dublin from almost anywhere in Europe. And um, there are two people already booked in from the UK. And the last time we had people coming from mainland Europe as well. So do consider it if you're living in Europe and get in contact with me. And you'll be picked up at the airport. And it's only a very short 20 to 30 minute drive from the airport to the beautiful venue we have arranged there. So I better stop, Chrism. So again, Kundalini Matters at gmail.com. And it would be wonderful to meet you. Thank you. Thank you, Kundalini. <laughs> Thank you, Amelia. <laughs> I'm going to hand it over to Rosemary here. She's going to give her dates for the seminar in Minnesota. Yes, thank you, Kristen. In September 27 and 28, uh, Kristen will be doing a seminar in St. Paul, Minneapolis area. We welcome everyone throughout the United States or anywhere to come, but particularly the Midwest and the cities, uh, the Twin Cities at that time are a beautiful time of year in Minnesota. And it will be a Friday and, um, no, I'm sorry, Saturday and Sunday, the 27th and 28th. And uh, Eileen Lauro and I are working on that. And what we have for putting together the cost, we do have the place and the hotel and those other details. Uh, and um, still working on some final things. Thank you, Rosemary. Wonderful, wonderful. So we have three seminars for, 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 for those for you to consider, okay, it does make a difference. It does make a difference coming to a seminar. I I only give at the seminars I give ishtis. Um, the ishtis are fairly strong. Um, a lot of them, you know, the ishtis will be dependent upon your practice of the safeties, no matter what, no matter what. Um, I, you know, I, I, I made the mistake of giving a person uh, a Shakti pot without uh, the practice of the safeties, and you know, it, it can be quite difficult. So I don't, I don't want anybody to have those levels of difficulty. Okay, practice the safeties. Practice your behavioral modifications. Yes, yes, Amelia. I would just like to say how amazing it is to attend a seminar because we don't have. I mean, there are so many different reasons why that is so, Chrism. We don't have many opportunities in our day-to-day -day life to meet other people who are Kundalini activated, Kundalini awakened, and to come together and to meet other people who are going through a process similar to what you're going through is just, it's, I mean, it's amazing. And it is a real gift that you can give to yourself. Uh, to then actually meet a Kundalini awakened teacher such as Chrism and to spend time with him is again a gift that you give yourself because you know new understandings and new perspectives on what it is that you're actually going through open up for you 
And really, your process will never, ever be the same after attending a seminar. Um, you will be so glad that you came. So if anybody is out there considering it, please do really look at it seriously. It was mentioned recently, you know, that PRISM comes to Ireland fairly often. And I just want to say we did have a seminar recently in October, and now we're having another one. But that's very, very rare. The one before that was in early 2011. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so, I mean, it could be, it mightn't even be 2015, it could be further out again before we have the next one. So don't assume that there's going to be another seminar offered because, you know, it's quite a big deal to organize and um, it may not be happening again for a while. So please do consider this opportunity um, for yourself. Okay. It's true. It, 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 thank you, Amelia. That's absolutely right. Um, <laughs> It, for for those who never travel, then then yeah, it can seem like I'm in I'm in Ireland, but uh, you know it's not the case. I don't I don't travel to Europe that much. Um, it's just that when I do travel there, I try to stay as long as I can, and, and that makes it seem like you know I'm you know Mr. Jet Set. I got to tell you, I'm the poorest uh, traveler on the jet. People ask me, oh, where, where are you going? What do you do? And I tell them. And first of all, they get that quizzical look on their face. What's that? You know, what's Kundalini? And, da, da, da. and I tell them about it. And and, uh, and a lot of people respond very positively. Uh, the radiance on the, air, on the airplane is quite strong. And uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful experience. But I don't do that much traveling because I don't like leaving Lasha here all by herself. You know, that's not fair to her. And so... Uh, so I don't do that much traveling, but I also know that my life is dedicated to giving the Kundalini uh, its voice through its radiance within me to other people. And if, I would encourage you to become one of those people. If you are at all interested in having the Kundalini in a safe and, and a supportive, nurturing environment, uh, I am not the kind of teacher that throws you into the deep end of the pool and says, well, okay, you sink or you swim. That's not me. Because I was thrown in the deep end of the pool, and I know how that feels. And uh, I will never, ever put a person in that position. Uh, if a person needs to be in that position, well, they can go somewhere else. I'm far more based in the positive aspects of reaching into into the light of grace from the darkness of grace into the light of grace that's that's the focus that comes at those at those kundalini awakening seminars and i really encourage you to consider minneapolis in the dates that rosemary gave uh minneapolis is a beautiful place st paul is a beautiful place and uh, Eileen Laurel and, and, and Rosemary have both lived, uh, you know, over a decade in this area. They know where the best spots are. They know where you can get the organic food. They know, uh, uh, you know, they know the area. And they're looking out for you. They're trying to find the very, very best venue. And they've got it. They've got a beautiful venue. And now they're just, they're just at the point where they're just getting some of the final organizational uh situations in line okay and the, and the and the same goes for the new york uh the new york i have seen the pictures of the venue in new york and really that is that is such a beautiful deal to, to the the new york scenario is just it's a gift from god seriously seriously it is beautiful and what they're including in that is amazing and it's really hard to to uh to beat that kind of a, of a situation. And with Ireland, uh, this is near Newgrange. This is near where the last seminar, and we went in to Newgrange. And, and I don't know if you recall, we came out with spiders in our hair and things like that. Tiny, 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 tiny little spiders, baby spiders. And uh, nobody, nobody had a problem with Well, you know, somebody, some people were surprised. <laughs> I wasn't surprised because Newgrange really is all about the Kundalini. Hello, Amelia. No, <laughs> no, I'm 
I'm just remembering that was that was a um, a very Kundalini experience going into New Grange. It was very special. And this time we're not staying in the same place. We're staying in a gorgeous old stone house very near to New Grange. I actually think this time we have a view of New Grange from one of from the big window out the back. So great. that's going to be Yeah, I think so. I think so. Great, great. So because yeah. I'll tell you what. We're all going to go back in to New Grange. We're going to take the whole seminar right inside of New Grange, just as we did last time. That will be part of the seminar. You know, it, you know, everything everything works out well. Uh, we will go in. We will we will walk to the to the New Grange uh, visitor center. We will take that bus. The bus will take us up to the road right below where the trail. Uh, heads up to New Grange, and this, and then you will literally go inside this megalithic structure that they call New Grange, that really has a lot of Kundalini uh, presence within it, waiting there. Uh, I was seeing visions. Uh, other people from the seminar were seeing and experiencing things, and the spiders were just one part of it, just a small part of it, a beautiful. A beautiful part of it, a living part of it, uh, but the whole the whole experience is phenomenal, and it will stay with you. It will stay with you, and I really encourage people in Europe, people in France, in Germany, people in Austria, people in Hungary, people in Switzerland, Bulgaria, uh, UK, Ireland, Spain, Portugal, Italy. Come to this seminar in Ireland. It is not an expensive air flight from anywhere in Europe. Come to this to this seminar in Ireland. I'd love to see you. Amelia would love to see you. And you can reach her at kundaliniMatters at gmail.com. All right. Uh, now, unless there are some questions from, from the uh, chat room, then I'm about ready to 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 let this uh, this this broadcast be as it is. Uh, so Amelia, do you do you is anybody writing? No, there's nobody writing. I'm looking now. Has anybody got a question there? No, nobody is nobody is writing. Good. Chris, and I want I wanted to ask you. I mean, I it's about the Huna prayer. Yes. Um, and I know that we did a program on this before, but one of the things about the Huna prayer that is very different to other forms of, I mean, it, we do it for 40 days, is that the Huna prayer itself does not change. You don't make any alteration to it. You know the way sometimes when we're... That's right, that's right. You write it down. Yeah. Could you, say, could you say something about that? Just You write it down exactly. Um, uh you could say something of this nature. Uh, may a healing be given to all the oceans of the world experiencing elevated levels of radioactivity. Okay, so the healing, you're not trying to, you're not trying to dictate how the healing goes. You're just asking for the healing to be given, and then you're generating the energy through the breathing to initiate that healing, to give the blessings to the kundalini or the amakua and the and the and the the mana the mana loa will rain down upon those oceans or you could you could also say uh let a healing be given to uh to correct the uh, the radioactive disaster at the fukushima nuclear plant you could also phrase it that way and uh, if you know you phrase it that way, then then that energy is given into that solution. But once you write it down and once you visualize it, you do not change it. You do not change it because you oh I forgot to add all black kitties are to be you know protected or whatever. You're not going to add anything to it. It needs to be done exactly the same way over and over and over for those forty days. And you're giving, remember the breathing, I won't go into it too much right now because it's in that conversation. Uh, you're, you're generating energy and you're giving it to your unihipili, the, 
the uh, ego child self, and the ego child self is projecting it to the high self, the amakua, the kundalini self. So that way, no aspect of our being is being ignored because all aspects of who we are are important and we count. The community that you are, the community that you are from every uh, cell and, 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 and every bone, you are a community of the Kundalini. You got approximately 17 trillion of you walking around in that body that you are. Okay? Use this. Do this. Bring yourself some positive karma. Balance maybe some of the negative karma that you have waiting for you. I want to thank everybody for listening. I want to thank uh, Amelia and Rosemary and Eileen and everybody who, who contributes their hard work, their hard work to these to these understandings, to this information. And remember that, that if you want a healing for yourself, but you're not willing to make changes, then you're not willing to create the environment to receive that healing. You won't get the healing. Remember, you need to change the inner environment to support the new change that you're asking for. Yes, Amelia? No, Chris, I'm just, I'm just, that color all the time. Okay. All right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, thank you, my dear. Thank you for, for supporting this broadcast. Thank you, Rosemary, for enduring it. <laughs> she, she, I think she's going to go take a nap. <laughs> thank Hi, you, Rosemary. <laughs> thank you, Lasha, for not scratching the furniture while you were doing it. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, this is Chrisom, Rosemary, and Amelia signing off. We'll see you next week. Thank you. <laughs>